Hey, we're back. It's episode two of Secure Digital Life with Doug White and Russ Boschman. We're here to talk to you about tech issues that affect your life and security issues that affect your life and the unending onslaught of technology that is going to affect your life every day. Today, we're going to talk about VPNs. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. And you type in AAA porn or whatever it is you're typing in. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We, I was at a PG show. And I'm really Yay. excited to be here. I'm glad you're here because somebody needs to know what's going on. That's right. Okay, so now, now somebody has to drink this. <laughs> it's another day. It's another episode. Yeah, he's looking at the wrong camera. You, oh. Oh, you move my you put my camera over here. Eh, there you cut. Go. Basically, forget you ever saw that. I, I think actually forgetting you ever saw that would really be a good <laughs> idea at this point. I wanted to talk about VPNs today because I was in China, and when I was in China, I was sitting in this hotel lobby and I was watching Netflix, and this guy came over to me and he goes, "Hey, hey, Doug, uh, how how are you watching Netflix in China? I tried to watch Netflix and it's blocked." And I was like, "Oh, I, I use a VPN," and he of course immediately said, "What on earth is a VPN?" And I was like, "Well, you know, it's this." Uh, well, it's this thing, and it's well, it's like techy. So let me explain. Okay, it's it's a lot of math. Let's let's get into math. <laughs> and then he walked off. But I was using a VPN that way because what a VPN does in that regard is it allows me to take a connection in one place and connect it through to an endpoint somewhere else. And that endpoint I was using was in the United Kingdom. So Netflix thought it was in the United Kingdom, even though it was really sitting in China. What happens is it takes all the information that's going between those two points, wraps them in this encryption packet, and ships them out. So it's kind of like mailing things to somebody in like a lockbox. And so people on the internet can't see it, and it has to get unwrapped somewhere at the other end. So normally when you use the internet, and we're going to take a look at that in, uh, next week too, but normally when you use the internet, what's happening is is everything gets sent in the clear. That's the protocol. And in the clear means it's just plain text. So that means if you looked at it, if you could capture what's there, you would actually be able to see things like L-O-G-I-N. That spells login. P-A-S-S-W-R-D. That spells password. Hackers love to look for stuff like that. So if they can capture the stream, they can actually see those things. Well, cell towers are encrypted. But when you use Wi-Fi, guess what? If you sit down at a Starbucks, that stream between your phone and the other end of that is just being sent over the airwaves and over the wire in the clear. And that means that anybody that's out there sitting in a back room somewhere they could grab that text and take a look at it. So if you do things like that, now there's all kinds of other things that protect you, so don't get totally freaked out and run screaming for the hills and you know abandon all your technology in, in a cesspool or something. But that's one of the key things about uh, VPNs. Um, so do you want you want to tell us a little bit about more about that, Russ, or what is your sure. experience with VPN? Sure. Uh, let uh, Let's go to the demo. Oh, oh, we're gonna do. A oh demo? no. Uh, well, I mean, my experience. We can cut that uh, post. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you want to stop and start again? Uh, no, it's fine. Uh, so my experience uh, with VPNs is I was also I too was in China and um, I had uh, I had to reach back to the university for a number of reasons, um, and uh, in order to do that uh, they block Google and they block uh, Netflix as, as you said and they block Facebook. So all, all the important sites that I use uh, important for you know personal stuff uh, is they're blocked. So I had to log into the university's uh, VPN server um, through an endpoint. Uh, right. Security or endpoint protection, and then uh, I was able to communicate with the okay. people who I need to talk to. So, yeah. Well, yeah, VPNs got started because a lot of company people needed to be able to get into their networks from mm -hmm. home, and they wanted to just ensure that the person connecting was mm -hmm. who who they said they was. Mm -hmm. And but that sort of slowly becomes something else because yep. now we realize that when you send things out over, into the world, that we want to protect them to a higher degree. Yep. So. A VPN can be put on your phone, mm -hmm. it could be put on your laptop computer, it can even be put on your home computer, and a lot of people use VPN all the time because they want everything to be encrypted. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is there's a point on your machine where things become encrypted, and that travels wrapped up in that lockbox to another point called the endpoint of the VPN. Now, what you need to remember is that 
a after that, it's no longer encrypted. So if you get to the other end, it's back in the clear. Before it starts, it's also in the clear. So what we did was um, Russ, it was trying to, well, Ru here's what happened. Russ was trying to invent a cocktail. And he had, he had celery salt and mint and some really cheap wine <laughs> and sparkling water. And, and, and so he was mixing these things together and people were running for the hills. And I said, what it really needs is a, a shot of soy sauce added to it because that's really going to set it off. But we decided to call the cocktail VPN. So really what Russ was trying to do was set up a demo so that he could show you with some analog tools. We didn't have any Lego people or anything like that. <laughs> we we're going to get some. Uh, so he could show you with some analog tools how VPN actually works. So we'll show you that right now. Which brings us to VPNs yes. and how they work. So I have, uh, I'm going to do a little analog demonstration here. It works with my students. Hopefully it will work for everybody here. And what we're going to talk about uh, or present is um, these two uh, season shakers uh, will be houses. Okay, so house here, house here. Okay, and they're separated by uh, a large body of water. And right now it's, it's clean water. Okay, so if House here wants a drink, uh, they can just drink uh, from the clean water source. And if House B here wants a drink, they can uh, drink from the clean water source. Okay, but what happens when that water sauce source becomes polluted? Okay, and this pollution uh, is analogous to hackers trying to do sniffing and, and all sorts of nefarious activities uh, over, over the internet. So what happens? How does House A and House B uh, get clean water? Well, we're also going to say that House B is on an island and House A is not, okay? So we're going to take a, let's say a, a, for all intents and purposes, uh, a hose, and we're going to run it through uh, or put it in the polluted lake, and House A, because he's neighborly or she's neighborly, is going to put it into the spigot in his house and pump fresh water to House B through the hose, which is inside the polluted lake. So that water that's coming from house A is clean and fresh and it's going through a hose and even though the hose is submerged in the filthy, dirty, polluted lake, the water is still clean because it's protected by a hose. Okay, by the casing on the hose. So house A is getting, feeding house B clean drinking water. And that's really analogous to how VPNs work. And VPN uh, itself is a technology uh, that acts uh, similarly to the hose in that it tunnels uh, traffic through a secure channel, which in this case is the straw, through the internet, through the web. Um, and even though there are prying eyes, which analogous to the polluted water here, even though there are prying eyes, they can't actually see through the VPN um, or or through the through the uh, through the hose. I mean, in the hose in this in this analogy. So, so VPNs are uh, very secure. They are are uh, very important um, in uh, to to host or to run a secure environment. Um, you have anything to add to that, Doug? Well, I mean, I, I, I like to think about it like a, a, a T-shirt cannon because it's really shooting a, a small piece that's wrapped up in Kevlar uh, through, I, I don't call it the, the dirty lake, I call it the seething Seth pool. <laughs> Did I, wait, not Seth. No, cess, the, the seething go. cesspool of secession. Yeah, okay, whatever. But <laughs> I, I mean, I, I like to think of it. You're shooting these packets that are wrapped up in Kevlar. But it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a very good analogy for what's going on between these two bottles of spices, uh, and 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 how you can get data through something you don't want anybody to see it. And I think that's the more important part uh, that it, that nobody can unwrap it, or you hope yep. that they can unwrap it. So. Yep. And what what types of um, technologies or sp specific VPNs have you used in the past um, with your friends, students, whatever? Well, I, uh, the one I mentioned earlier was was, uh, was ExpressVPN, which uh, we put a link on the wiki probably, but um, that one is an iPhone, and they make it for uh, Androids and other things, and that's the one that, that I like to use because it lets you do two things. One, you've got a VPN, and you can choose the endpoint. Okay. So by being able to choose that endpoint, like I was talking about earlier, uh, if, if I was in China, I can choose an endpoint in the UK, and then I can watch Netflix. Yep. But... And, and and, and so uh, that one, and then there's one for Android specifically called Hide My Ass, which, which is a pretty nice uh, product as well that you can use. Uh, these do cost a little bit of money, so they have a monthly fee. But honestly, if you're, if you're going around, just like we were saying earlier, if you're going around to stray Wi-Fis and you're sticking your phone in all kinds of places, you really need to be using a VPN.
end, or you're going to have a big lot of grief because people can't be grabbing up those packets. So, so those are really the two products that I like to use. And I, I mean, I run ExpressVPN on my phone anytime that I'm on a Wi-Fi that I don't know specifically is secured. Yep. And we, and we get that question a lot, too, from a lot of our students, a lot of people out in the public. Uh, uh, you know, what is a VPN? How does it work? Why should I care about it? Um, you know, and how do I use it? And it's as easy as installing an application or a piece of software and then just starting it up or configuring it to start up automatically when you boot your computer, boot your device. Um, and just, but just remembering to do that every time uh, is great. Yep. And that's how you make... A VPN. Don't do, don't do that at home, really. <laughs> and don't drink it's, it. it well, yeah, don't, don't do it at home. Don't drink it. I just would basically forget you ever saw that. I, I think actually forgetting you ever saw that would really be a good idea <laughs> at this point because I'm trying to forget it. We had to have all the stuff cleared off the counter because I thought, you know what's going to happen? I, they're going to cut away from me. I'm going to reach down and I'm going to take a big drink of that. And then it's going to be one of those cinnamon challenges and I'm going to be throwing up over the bar table. <laughs> Although that would probably really generate a, a lot of traffic to our site. So yeah. we become like a cult following. We can take it's the like, VPN challenge. But then it turns into the thing like Kiss. You know, it's like because I always figured that Kiss was like the band Kiss. Mm. Uh, we're not going to kiss. No, no, I promise. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I always figured Kiss really regretted that makeup after like the third show. So the first two shows, like, wow, this is cool. You know, everybody's thinking we're, we're freaky looking. And then by the third show, they're like, okay, I don't ever want to put this. Oh no, we got to do it again tomorrow. <laughs> so yeah, we're not going to start anything like that. Um, especially if I have to throw up every show, yeah. but it would really be bad. But it might, you know, who knows. It'd be like toss point or something. Oh. A couple of things to caution you about with VPNs. One is don't ever start assuming that you're overly secure. I call this the oversecure fallacy because people do that. They say, oh, I put antivirus on my machine. Now I can just go crazy. I can do whatever I want. Uh, I put anti-malware on my machine. Now I can go crazy. VPNs the same way. You still have to use common sense. Uh, when you are connecting to Wi-Fi, you need to think about what you're doing just a little bit. And, I, and we all do it. We all sit down in a coffee shop and go, oh, look, free Wi-Fi. But sometimes these are nefarious, and, and there are there. It's very easy to set up fake Wi-Fi's. I've done it. You've done it. Russ has probably done it. Everybody's done these kind of things. And when they do them, it creates a situation where now you are capturing people's traffic. So use a VPN, but don't assume that it's going to save you from everything in in the whole world. Uh, the other thing that sometimes people use are proxy servers, and Russ is going to tell you a little bit about the difference between a proxy server and a VPN. So um, back in the day if you will, as my students would say, uh, you know, they, they at schools, at pub certain public schools, at many public schools, they block uh, traffic on the internet to specific sites like Facebook or uh, other websites uh, that we won't talk about. And so um, that way the, the students are focused on specific, uh, only specific things like, uh, say, Google Classroom or whatever. So Facebook's blocked. So what students were doing is they're going to these places called proxy sites, um, which, uh, was it, hidemyass.com was yeah, one? Sure. So, yeah, So they had these proxy sites uh, where students would go and it would sort of mediate and direct the traffic for you, for, you know, getting around the uh, parental uh, guides right. or suggestions that the, that the uh, network administrator put into place to prevent them from going to sites. And so the students would be able to go to places like Facebook or, you know, growmyegg.com or whatever games they were playing back then. I, I don't remember, but... Um, Grow my well, egg. Yeah, well, the, you know, like virtual pets and stuff. So... Uh, <laughs> well, I, never, we I never got that. I'm let's, sorry. Let's register that domain name. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll do that while you're yeah. talking. But uh, so so the, the, these these proxy servers sort of uh, they're different from VPNs and and they're not they're not protective by nature. They just fool sort of uh, you know the, the different uh, hard pieces of hardware that prevent um, students from or anyone from going to specific right. Websites. And I mean, and all those kind of servers are used to basically create a point where it could be a jumping off point. A lot of companies use proxy servers. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they use them to restrict people's access. So I used to set up a lot of these things called Dan's Guardians, and Dan's Guardians was just a box that sits at your at the edge of your network. And what happens is all all the traffic goes through it, and so whenever somebody's like uh, browsing the internet, and they're going to growmyegg.com or whatever twisted thing that I'm not even going to type that in. There's there's stuff I'm not typing into Google <laughs> ever, but uh, I'll, I'll probably go register the domain if it's not. And I have a lot of domain names from Security Weekly yeah. that, that, that I get mail now. I will tell oh. you, I get, my mail, the mail person who delivers our mail, we get all this stuff all the time for borgbondage.com because oh I, I registered that because we were 
talk about it on Security Weekly, and I, I bet this guy has no idea what's going on at, at like our house, and it's just like, hello, Sid, and he's just like, oh, like I don't want to know. But but anyway, uh, Dan's Guardian was a tool that would would restrict those kind of things, and we did see people starting to try to use tools like VPNs mm-hmm. to get across mm-hmm. Dan's Guardian because Dan's Guardian could not look inside that traffic. So what happens with that VPN again is that it starts here on your your local source. So if it's a phone or it's a desktop or whatever it is, and it gets wrapped up in an encrypted wrapper is essentially what it is. So each little piece of that communication gets wrapped in an encrypted wrapper and it gets sent to the other end. The only way to unwrap it is if you have the key. So those certificates that got exchanged have to be used then to unwrap that packet so you can see inside. So theoretically, uh, it can't be seen on the internet. Now, I say theoretically because, again, that over-secure fallacy... Mm -hmm. Be careful. Don't ever assume that everything is secure because anything can be broken. So any kind of encryption, uh, if you have enough time, and by time here we mean cycles. So time is about how fast a computer runs, not about the tick of a clock. Humans are forced to live in this world of this nice linear time. But in in computer world, everything is based on cycles. Mm -hmm. So the more that CPU can process, the faster time actually runs. So if I can throw enough cycles at something, I can Mm -hmm. break almost anything. And and we have this problem. It's called Moore's Law, right? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. and Moore's Law is is about how computing keeps increasing. And so we have to keep making bigger and bigger and bigger encryptions. So be careful about what you're sending over unsecured channels anyway. So if you have access to cool stuff like launch codes or you know, <laughs> self-destruct mechanism codes that you keep for your house. I mean, you, everybody has that, right? I mean, it's yeah, just yeah like, I do. I always want that thing in my house where like on Alien where there's like a countdown. And it, oh, I, yeah. I should, we should put one of those together That'd so be cool. that you could trigger it like at a party and the sirens will start going off and it's like, yep. you know, self-destruct. Don't in, touch this button. In one minute. <laughs> and, and, and So anyway, that's a little bit about how VPNs work and and some of the issues that are going on with it. Um, I I think you should have it. I mean, that's, that's, please put VPN on your phone and and use it. And if you don't, eventually somebody's going to start capturing your traffic when they jump out and they grab it off the Mm Wi-Fi. You have a Wi-Fi? No? No? Yeah. Russ, Russ is in agreement. So. I am complete in agreement. Yeah, and I will tell you, if you go to if you travel a lot, especially because you if you're just sitting in one place and you know the Wi-Fi that you're connected to, then it's not so bad. But right. I mean, I go to all these different places. I'm in hotels, mm-hmm. and we're always using like hijacked Wi-Fi because yeah. I used to stay in a certain brand of hotel, which I won't say here because they don't pay me. Um, and and you know we're always sitting in a windowsill trying to find is an apartment across the street. And I used to stay in one in New York, and there was an apartment across the street that had unsecured Wi-Fi, so I used to use that guy's Wi-Fi all the time. That is Commit, that's confessed to a crime. When I was in when I was in Vegas uh, a couple of weeks ago for CES, we had uh, at the hotel we were staying at, Hotel Casino, they had um, uh, unsecured Wi-Fi. There wasn't even a password to get in. It was completely wide open. So no, well, yeah. not even no no password, no authentication, nothing, nothing, completely open. But but you can set that stuff up too. I, I mean, you can actually set up Wi-Fi on the fly, and you can set up fake ones if you wanted to capture yeah, people's trap. Yeah, yeah you, well, it's not even a honeypot. No. It's like could be legitimate Wi-Fi. Well, yeah. I mean, if I turn my phone on and allow it to be a hotspot that's wide open at at uh, at the stadium up there. Mm-hmm. I, I was at a concert, and we were we were changing the name of our local hotspots to the names of like the artists and stuff, so that people in the crowd would get all excited about it yep. and I mean it's easy to do that and I set one up in a hotel once and it was totally legit but I mean the people that were connecting to it had no idea what they were connecting to they could have been connecting to a total hack site where I was trying to capture their traffic and they were they were logging into their email they were buying stuff they were doing all kinds of yep. things and because I was seeing that traffic on the front end when they went to buy something all the protection on the web which exists which we're going to talk about next week but all the protection on the web that existed was not there. I was seeing it raw before it ever got out on the internet. So I saw the traffic in the clear and I could have got all their usernames, passwords, their email logins, and guess what? People use the same thing for everything. So yep. all that stuff is reasons that you need to use a VPN because if they had done that, I couldn't have seen anything except a bunch of garbage. And I would have had to spend a lot of cycles trying to break that and it would take a long, long time. 
So what are we having on the show next week? Next week on the show, we're going to talk about stuff you shouldn't do on the internet in terms of like data, uh, giving, uh, giving, giving away your data mm-hmm. to, uh, and how you should look at websites to try to determine what those kind of websites are like. I mean, is this safe? Is it trustworthy? Or is it like wide open? Because you're going to get those. Yep. Uh, I mean, and, and we all go to sites that, that you know, I want to look at something. I want to read this report or there's a paper and you go, wow, this is a creepy like website. Mm-hmm. I get the, and I get I get malware pop ups all the time. Yep. This is oh you were trying to go to this site, and it's like you I wouldn't advise it. But yep. sometimes I go to those anyway. And and we'll talk a little we'll talk about a couple of strategies for uh, for doing that as well. Okay. Because I, I have a couple of strategies I use if I want to look at a hack site and I'm getting all kinds of warnings. So we'll talk about that stuff next week. Great. And uh, and we'll keep talking about this VPN stuff too because it just keeps coming up and uh, all these different issues. Okay. Great. See you Have next week. One.